Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, welcome, welcome to another exciting, innovating, and amazing propaganda cast from your host from Pearl Dane, the one and only master propaganda hero, psych defender of the fatherland of theater 2v2 on Torrente. Yes, indeed. It is a torrent. In the south, we have Evelyn and Blue Skid Row fighting here for the German army, Deutschland. He is setting out with the 16th Panzer Division, 5th and 7th Panzer Grenadier companies, respectively. We got here Daniel D and Twister in the north fighting here with the combined American British task force here with reclaiming this city from the German forces before they can actually withdraw and do damage elsewhere. So, we got here Indian artillery for Daniel D. Twister with Airborne. 82nd Airborne apparently has been sent in his support as well. The British 6th Armored Division. We got Evelyn here with Coastal Defense. And we got Blue Scarecrow with Italian Infantry. So, Italian forces here have been dispatched well from the 4th Italian Infantry Division, Livorno. We got English Pani's base here by the Eastern Church. Already there, we can see Evelyn looking to close things off. As always, big hearty thanks to my patron supporters for the continued and generous support of the propaganda cast and a big hearty thanks for commenting and liking on the video so you know let's get back to the action anyways md4 two team hauling forts here through the ruined landscape panzer pioneer there falling back already there ludwig falls over there shot in the back here coastal surfs being hauled forts here we got the 250 half track moving forts as well here for evelyn panzer pioneer popping into it sappers falling a bit back here we got machine guns lining up though to support the allied forces here right from there out for Twister here is his path to engage the 250 half the Leiter Schutzen Panzerwagen. Section A joining up now here for Daniel D. So, better skirmishing. Fighting overall is heavily focused on around the center here as both sides are looking to then claim here to the fuel pump, which tends to be fairly crucial here to, shall we say, Torrenta. Left side meal, which is mostly munitions, is getting. Whoops, sorry about that. I was trying to like just circle around it with the mouse and like for some reason my finger slipped. But, anyways, left side. Is tends to get not as much attention because it's most munitions. Not because munitions are bad, obviously, but your tanks do not run on munitions. If they could, I mean, obviously, America would look a lot different if they could get the stuff to run on gunpowder, now wouldn't it? But that's another story. Pioneers up here, they're about to be assaulted here by a section under the command of Daniel D. We got the Ketan coming up here. So we got here Evelyn Hill up on the east side, bike in the west here. Moving up, ground points there for Blue Skate Row. Saps are moving in, Pioneers getting out of the way of the Sappers as they're definitely not made for that. Machine gun sitting up in the church here, following up a strong point here of the 7th Panzer Grenadier Company. Rascal holding up here, and we got a mortar moving forwards here. For Twister, ready to blast his way through German defensive positions. Nice pick as always. Panzer Grenadiers out there for Blue Skate Row. Right, they're being fixed up. It's only a hectic match, but again, partly again, it's just like everyone is just zoning in on the sand here to an extent, ignoring the rest of the map, which obviously again on this map kind of makes sense because for once there's actually a fuel point in the middle of the map, so yeah. But uh, that said, it's all kind of just the way the entire map kind of flows, like everything just kind of moves towards the center. Pantapenia squad there, good kill here for the eyes, massive push for the center, but there you go. Assault grenades out here though for. Blue skate rope moving in with their MP40s, hosing their allied forces. Also, of course, got the arse load of Stilhan gun out of their extra truck with the outs. But there you go, had a quick grenade first in here. The M42 was just Mark II panel grenade, not M something there. But, anyways, Rask going forward here. Salt is taking damage already. We got more salt grenades out here for Blue Skate Row. One of those interesting picks where we actually see a lot of assault grenades out of the deck. They're not necessarily common. I wouldn't say that this because they're bad, but uh, they definitely. Not the most popular unit up north here. We got bike versus the Pathfinder. See, assault are being bled out here, though. East side here, though. We got Evelyn still in a bit more defensive position. We got the Panzer Grenadier Company up here. Assault guns, I think they're about to get wiped out. Yeah, Blue Skate over there makes the right choice. Moves back. Machine gun mortar in the center. We got a heavy mortar out here for Daniel D now. Bring in some big artillery here. Second assault gun is coming up with MP40s. Or possibly some MP38 snuck in there as well. Popping into the 250 half-track there. Going up here, the rifle squad they're withdrawing. More to find the church, which of course by now has been abandoned. We got the offs out here for Evelyn. 
Bolton truck then getting the 250 Aftex, slamming through the thin armor. Bike also being pushed back here as the Bolton truck remains a significant issue for anyone not heavily armored. Over to Twister and over to Blue Skirt Row. He's down to his two assault and he scores the 250 out from the bike. But obviously, in this case, he's looking to turn things around with the L640 Eternal Light Tank call in. Definitely something I'm expecting to get nerfed whenever we finally do get a balance patch. But for now though, more light channel moving forward here with the auto cannons ready to rake down anything remotely not Italian or German within the streets of Torrento. German force here falls back as we see Elvin sort of more slowly pushing forwards. But still trying to push forwards, but actually they're more willing to act as a punching back and to the Allies' aggression. As we see Blue Skip with diving down there, go Pulsion Truck in a lot of trouble now. Driver there just trying to get out through the crowded streets here. While the Italian tanks are just running through. And there you go. We got into tank rifles at the boys. Anti tank rifles. We got the light tank tanks being pushed out. And there we go. One down. One down. One to go. Good kill there in return. I would say for the hours. We got a snare off here. We could see Blue Skid Row rapidly lose both light tanks here. That would be very helpful for the hours, of course. Because the faster they can get rid of these, the better, both in terms of like just not having to deal with them, but also just shutting down the you know, economic advantage of the opponent having them on the field, just murdering stuff. Heavy Mortify, then the machine gun pushing it back here. Fighting remains utterly intense here. American and British forces piling on for the center push here. Machine gun wiped out, mortar wiped out. Mines exploding though here. Things are just exploding across the center. Grenades off, machine gun also sets up. Definitely one of my least liked features is the auto set on machine guns. That's late, in part because it always does it at the wrong times. For me at least. Fresh assault here, but the assault goes up with MP40s, spraying down allied troops there. A lot of fire there, we got smoke grenades here, good use of smoke there by Blue Skate Road. Thumbs up, we got paratroopers inbound here for Twister and the 86 Airborne. Fifth paratrooper company. Ross got their push back here, taking heavy damage. Mortifying close to the 250 half track. Got a second one out here this time though with the Lactus in front of Geschutz Axine. Back at the base here, we got the platoon command post up there for Daniel D and for Twister. He is twisting his way towards the motor pool. Machine gun there, though, in a bit of a hot trouble there. It's the German artillery now. Sounds off here. That isn't a mortar that is. So gives the section. Parrot coming up with M1 carbines. And there you go. Pushing forward to the assault gun. He's smoke deployed again. Got used by Blue Skate Rush Smoke again. Two thumbs up. Very nice to see that. Very nice. Half text me supporting this advance. But those wondering, did the German sort of heavily equip any units for some machine guns? Not on a paper basis, though it seems to have indicated at least the Jaeg is actually more heavily equipped with submachine guns, whereas, again, ironically, that would make it a bit funny then. I really keeps into equipping them with G43s, but that's another story. But that's the closest sort of can find so fine source indications there. Otherwise, oh, it depends really based on the situation because if they were expected to, like, you know, conduct assaults and whatnot, they are indicated they just equip the men with submachine guns, but it was, you know, more on a case by case basis. And of course, there's the other option, which is just. Troops just have a tendency of picking up automatic weapons if they can get away with it. Because they more than the time realized that the submachine was more effective than the bolt action rifle a lot of the time the engagements they were in. So they tend to pick them up. In particular on the Eastern Front, the PPS-841 and the PPS-43 were fairly popular. On the Western Front, it was more the Sten gun. Fun fact. But anyways, the workers there pushing forward with the Thompsons. In the center of the half text, we both upgrade to more half text. So suddenly we see a massive explosion there of artillery here. And we got the new left for absolutely just pummeling that hay mortar because unsurprisingly they want it gone. What's the toddy out for Blue Skirt Row? Further increasing the amount of assault troops can bring to bear. Not just assault grenadiers, but of course Italian assault engineers with the M30 at Beretta. In these here, though, Italian coastal service are being mowed down by the Gurkhas in cold blood. Absolutely just devastated here by the British Empire's finest. We got a medic bunker here, which is now being used to call an artillery from. Desert, well, guide artillery, I suppose. So that's a lot of artillery here. There you go, grenade assault here, mills bombs raking through here. 
Evelyn's Mod Crew L640 Rushing Unit could turn the tables on Daniel D. And there he goes, scores the wipe. Really intense match. And there you go, Bazooka Paratroopers here. Caught the bike, but it gets away there. Guasa turning up with their Lancia Fiamma. Assault Gunners probably should want to be pulled back for some healing. I don't think Blue Skip was going to get much value out of those. Over to Evelyn again. And to Daniel D. We know the Bowie that the Twister is going for BAR's one than his rifleman. More tactics hanging back, but they're hanging back. No further tech for the Germans. We have a company command post for Daniel D. The answer to that is no. And not much else here further out of Twister. While he has gone for the boat, we'll go for vehicles. We got more neat left fight trying to silence that heavy mortar team there. Mine's exploding here, ripping through Gerald's foot. We got more bunkers here for Evelyn. Further fortifying here in the narrow streets. The assistance of the 4th Italian for Division of War now. Rafts on the west side here. We got assault guns there pushed back. Unsurprisingly, as again, they were exceptionally low on health there. And we're not really going to be a much you know, use in the fighting prolonged. Crystal Service pushing up here. Valiantly pushing forwards. We got fresh workers out there for Daniel D. And we got more Was the Torta here for Blue Skirt Row. Which, certainly for an env urban environment like this, does make sense to bring in as many heavier challenges sort of as there with again flame throwers that pack a punch. Captain there being forced back. Greyhound now up here for Twister was definitely starting to expect that was he just went for the building for the anti tank and it's gonna take up further. And there you go, the L640 now. And some pretty deep marinara there as the Grand goes for the tank here. Trying to get it out there, but oh, looks like he only path the support part of the path out and out all the way though. Second Italian tank down. Guasatorio though are making uh, very short work. They have infantry in the way. East side there. Evelyn pushing forward again. We got the Panzer Company. No big surprise. Though part of me is slightly surprised. He practically just went for this for the Nibu there for nothing else. I mean, to an extent though, he probably also went for it in case he needed a pack 40, but that never became an issue. So I imagine he's relying on Starstrom and Panda Force from here on. We'll see. I could be proven wrong. Not the medic bunker. This is because he lost the previous one. Now he's going for a second medic bunker. In his teammate's base, though, actually. Yeah, that makes sense. Thumbs up there. Good teamwork. Providing a medic bunker for his teammates. So you can that way you need to get the stuff healed up. Thumbs up there, Turbo. Smoke grenade from the Gorkas. Down on the coastal officer, they're moving up. Mines going off. They're really good mining by the Evelyn. They're really consistent and thorough mining. Making much up for the answer. It's just a new dash through there. And we got here the Daniel G bring in the Bishop. Meanwhile, we got off map airburst barrage being unleashed here upon German positions here by Captain Krauts exploding here as the position of the 7th Panzer Grenadier Company are being shattered here by the British. Medic bunker down, mortar about to go down as well here. A good push here by Daniel D, and that's been before the Bishop has arrived. Nibla find the attempt to break up the British push. We got Evelyn's first unit is a Storm Panzer IV. An interesting choice there. An interesting one. Bike in the west here, six pounder guns away for Daniel D. What will Blue Skit will go for here though? Armored of Service, Panzer Threes, Flak 36s. Pair of Troopers, they're going for the 250 half tracks. They're on the hunt. The German artillery, but they are getting caught with a double Guasatori. One more tough to did go down. Storm Panzer Fiel almost done, and there you go. Massive assault here by Blue Skirt Girl. Again, total of four assault infantry squads, two assault guns, two Guasatoris. We've got lots of smoke as well here, which makes it very difficult here for the machine to shut it down. Particularly since he's not exactly blocked them up. They actually sort of like, you know, recently spread out. He's thinking, like, you know, both push a broader frontage being hard to just stop down the machine but also like down a fairly you know effective smoke chain with a bot smoke grenade so thumbs up to that bishop here they're falling back but with a 25 pound gun mounted on the valentine tank chassis it was the very first british self-propelled artillery praise piece as it would turn out they had some shortcomings including the fact it couldn't 
angle it's done very high. There's a fun one. Got to push back. Bike knocked out here. Good work there by Twister. Stump hunts a few running forwards. Supported by the need of our over to Twister and over to Blue Skate Row. Going for the Panzer Fee there. The Panzer Kampfwagen 3 Ausführung L. Assault Grenade is wiped out. Better blow there to Blue Skate Row. But his Panzer has arrived as the Sturm Panzer rolls through here. Early model. The Sturm Panzer 4, which seems to be what they really like going because that one early model. This later model actually had a machine gun there, sort of uh, at the higher end of the armor there. Fun fact. Plus other modifications, but the whole machine is probably the easiest like just tell apart. And if we the rolling forwards. Rayon's moving up, Antitank's moving up, P. Grabbing the Eastern Victory Point here, Storm Panzer turning its mighty gun there, and there we go, Gorkas taking some light damage. Fresh medic bunker up here for Evelyn. And Vivas Roth could almost go to wipe here, but looks like Twister's luck holds through. Smoke being put again. Again. Good use of smoke here by Blue Skate Row. Guasatori assault is on the west side here. Correct shooting there. We've got Sully called in on the jump positions here. Need left on the anti tank gun. Storm Punt the explosion in the rear. Still, Anti in there pushed back. Still a ground here for Twister, and does he have a tank depth up? So far, the answer to that is no, and we're not seeing a come to command post up yet either here for Daniel D. Instead, I suppose it's not like the Germans have a lot of armor threats at the moment that really necessitate uh, something heavier than that, but it might be worth investing in two victory points. Why is it? It would appear the Germans do continue to have a bit of a lead, but that could be, of course, daily dealt with here by the Allies. Another Panzer Fee there for Blue Skate Rope. Panzer Fee there being fixed up. The Model L was shows it the first mass produced model with the high velocity 50 mm gun, though there was one before that, the J1, but seems to be just more like a you know, case by case basis. Sam is the Coastal Service. Bishop wants more at the front line. Bishop would later be superseded by the priest, but the British actually wanted a priest with a 25 pounder gun. The Americans didn't want to make that, so the British went on to make their own, which was known as the Sext. So, little fun fact there. Another pantry of the River Blue Skid Row. Pantry breaking through the walls, squash the then support. And there you go, directly into the tank plus Bazooka Fire here couldn't render Blue Skid Row's pantry toast. New Bear Fire Trans Sons, the mortars, but. Good use of the buildings here to direct against, like, or cover somewhat against the Soviet fire, though there are limits, and the hay mortar goes down again. Machine in their close being wiped out, smoke deployed. East side here, though, Daniel D charges into Evelyn's positions, which, with artillery support here from the officer, is definitely made quite expensive here for Daniel D. In the west side, though, the push forwards here by Twister continues, and Blue Skate Row is slowly but surely being pushed back here. Street by street, alley by alley. Good push here by Twister. Thumbs up. He's out here though. Storm Punch still at it. Evelyn not really showing much sign of more arm. In fact, Evelyn is going for another knee of alpha here. The enemy holds all victory points. All victory points are falling here to the Allies again. I would suggest some Star Storm here though for Evelyn. But that's just me. I mean, admittedly, I do tend to recommend Star Storm in a lot of situations. Workers moving out by the Thompsons. Oh, that was a wipe. And I think that was another Gorka section that actually just got obliterated there. And Storm Punch being hit here. But bouncing it. Pantheon is going up again here for Blue Skid Row. Really bunched up here. I do think to some degree Evelyn really wants to get a bit more aggressive because against in the artillery all of these bunkers will become a bit of a liability if say you know Daniel D decides to bring in the howitzers. Twister Valley taking up, Pantry's going for flank here, two thumbs up but uh, in this case lacking a bit more oomph and a bit more support. Almost losing one of the Panther threes. Still able to do some damage here to Twister's positions, almost wrecking the entertainment in a matter of moments. 
Oh, direct hit from the knee blade from the end of tank and second end tank here from that twist. Oh, Daniel D could get caught up in as well here. Wreck the other one. That is definitely not good for the allies. Tank there for the almost done for Twister. Let's pop back to Daniel D. And he's going for the company command post. Thumbs up and O to Evelyn. Who's gone here for Coastal Wall? Not going for the Obitia. yet. Still. That is two entertainers lost here for Twister. Yeah, we got the base you've been blasting across, and this causes a, like another threat to all the bunkers besides the potential of a howitzer. There you go, base you hard at work. Panther falls only for Evelyn, thumbs up, though, would still advise some star swim eventually. And of course, for Blue Skate Row, certainly wouldn't be a half bad thing to maybe consider, like, you know, going for the Armored Reserves upgrade and maybe setting up for. Either a Tiger Tank or maybe a Panther for some Stooks. As usual, the Panther Fleet calling from the Armored Reserves just isn't worth it. I still think at least, if nothing else, that one needs to be like, you know, changed into something a bit more useful. Panther Fleet's got the center strength of the Panther Tank here, though. And we got an Airburst Barrage here. Panther Fleet is suffering, and in damage, getting snared up. And there you go, massive artillery barrage here, slamming into Daniel's positions. Several weapons crews here. Of the British 6th Armour Division are obliterated a matter of moments. Alongside someone's poor front yard. My Petunias! You fascist assholes! And for the spotting some Sabbath trying to flank around here. Matilda's on the way now for Daniel D. Storm Punch got trying to go on the 6th Punch again head on. Right moving towards the center victory point. Panther Feast diving up again here for Blue Skate Row. And tank is there being wrecked further. Panther Feast with heavy ending damage. And to tank is there under Twister's command. Keep blasting away there. Of North here, Swordsman Cop with the Ralph Squad here. And Twister quickly realizes the error of his ways. Emar. East, north of the church here. Evelyn pushes forward with his armored fist of the Fatherland here. Sword Grins right over by the Greyhound. Panther working spot of an anti tank gun. Storm Punch moving to support as well here. The Zooker Team firing as well here. Fresh Panther feed there for Blue Scarecrow, pushing up to a total of three. Evelyn, though, definitely at risk of losing the Panther 4. No. Ah, oh, you lost it. That definitely should have had some infantry support. There's some stars to more Panzer Gunners, I think, to cop support that. I think that could have helped a lot with the anti tank guns, but. Uh, Again, Evelyn just doesn't seem to be interested in, like, supporting his army with troops. More support has been cleared up with the need Nidwerfers. Definitely getting some good value out of them. Until rowing forwards here through the rubble. They should be moved up again. Coastal Service here for the Gurkhas. That is definitely a one-sided engagement, unless Daniel D proceeds to spectacularly misplay his Gurkhas. Command points there. Sort of floating around here a bit for some of the players. Except for Evelyn. Workers there push back. The enemy have claimed our sector. Until the moving up in gig the machine crew here, pack 40. Got wrecked there, maybe that was a yeah. setting up a bunker here. Until they're getting hit by the Strum Panzer 4, but bounces off the Strum Panzer 4's 100 mm thick front llama. Six pound guns at the ready. It is an anti tank bunker here. If that's where the pack actually came from. But, anyways, there you go. Pack bunker up. That's going to make things a bit tough here for the hours to hit. attack head on without artillery support, though, because they do have artillery support. It's not like Daniel Lee has no answer to that whatsoever. We got another massive barrage artillery here. Though in this case, Evelyn Sneed Weavers mostly seems to be just hitting dirt. And of these there, ripping into the retreating rifleman here. Evelyn not too far from another Panther 4. Nearly seconds away, though, could of course still. Pencils some dust open. Smoke deployed here. Got the section of the tank right to the Gurkhas moving forwards. And we got a Hellcat on the way here for Twister. 
Not much of a surprise there. Matilda shrugging off most of the damage of the German panzers. It is fearless. And there you go. Another Sturm Panzer Evelyn. There's a surprise. Not exactly it's something I see a lot of, so. I mean, it could go all the way, but my instincts are that probably gonna be a bit pushed. But anyways, Tristy, of course, got the carpet bomb run lined up. Even has the munitions. It's just a matter of, like, you know, finding the right time to use it. Meanwhile, Blue Skirt will adding in more Panther Fees. And certainly, four Panther Fees is quite the force, especially if upgraded. But there's also part of me that still thinks, you know, armor serves and maybe some. A bit bigger would be nice. And there you go. Cover bong run here, calling in from the right hand side here. Twister unleashes the power of the US Air Force here. Oh dear, and I don't think uh, Evelyn quite realized the gravity situation suffers. Quite a few losses. The pack bunker somehow survives, but the officer and machine crew there gets utterly obliterated beneath the sheer weight of countless. Oh, I don't know. I'm assuming 50 kilo bombs. It could be 100 kilos, maybe 250. I don't know. I also got a bunker there just sort of pointing. I'm guessing that's planned to be a repair bunker. Needle fire here again, trying to sign some of the allied stuff here. West side, Panther Thieves moving up. Yeah, Blue Skid were with four Panther Thieves. Still got two Guasatori squads, so that's a lot of Guasatori. Six pound gun at the ready. Panther engaging here. Hellcat finally slamming into the Panther Thieves with this 90mm gun. 90mm, 76mm. I said 90mm for some reason, I guess my just went to the M36 Jackson for some reason. 6 point gun cleared out. Panzer Fees roaming around. Attila they're firing at the Sturm Panzer, obviously not doing too much damage. Second one being repaired. We got Attila firing down death here, and we do have a repair bunker up. A lot of artillery just running about here. And again, west side of the map just isn't seeing too much action. It's really just supposed to have been around the center on the east side here. But we are seeing a bit of action on the west side. In fact, things are about to get a lot hotter here as Blue Scarecrow sends in a full on, near full strength Panzer platoon here. Crowd scores there, they're being met by the Panda Feast. We could see a wipe here. Multiple wipes, in fact. This could get pretty uncomfortable, Twister. In fact, chance of him not losing both squads here now pretty much next to nil. And there you go. Two rough squads go on the blink of an eye here. The armored fist of the father, and they're just catching him and just ripping his hand off there. Strum punch ready to move forwards again here. Rav Scorps can run into there and looks like Twister's almost ready. Oh, there he goes, calling another cover bombing run here. This time from another angle here against Evelyn. Oh dear. Takes a bit of a while to get there. There you go, though. Mostly destroying a bunker and some buildings, but most of Evelyn's walls here kind of get out of that unscathed. That was fairly lucky there, to be honest. That was fairly lucky. That's also very resilient chimney there. Up north here, the blue scope really went deep with the panda face, but it suffered a lot of damage. We've got Sherman's on the way here for Twister. Even as the finding here continues, blue scope going in very deep now. Might even get some more wipes here on Twister. This could get really bad for Twister. Well, could get worse. I would say is probably the more accurate way of putting it at this stage. Like he's already lost countless rough squads and lost his parent squad. He might lose the Hellcat here. So obviously at this point, the situation is not like, you know, bad. It's just a matter of like how worse does it get? Much worse does it get? There we go though. Flank with Dom Matilda's here. At least Daniel there is able to use this to some degree of the... Uh, Vengeance here, but still, Twister there definitely had his arm twisted around. Thankfully, also for the Allies, Evelyn, I think, isn't quite realizing this, or is just so weakened that he can't actually like leverage Blue Skipper's pushing to make a good push himself and up to east side. So, this is definitely not looking too rough here for the Allies. And in fact, now Blue Skipper is in further problems because without. Evelyn to draw your attention and force him to, like, you know, maybe not pursue these pens of fleas. There's no chance he might lose a lot more tanks here than he might always have. Oh, got the Hellcat, though. 
Blue skate right there, definitely not one you take lightly. Just quickly, it's an opportunity to sneak in a shot, and then Hellcat and finish it off there, delivering another slap across the face there against Twister. So that was a pretty brutal push there. That could have really just completely burn Twister, but a bit of luck came in and got a call support from Daniel D. But even then, that wasn't quite as smooth as they would have liked it. So finally, though, Evelyn has moved forward here with the Wales left his forces, though again, the lack of infantry is becoming increasingly. Uh, Obvious and again some star storm and some Vermark Panzer guns I think could do a lot here for Evelyn. Let's pop back here to Daniel D though. Bring in Crusaders and let's pop over to Evelyn. Got the Eastern Rick 2.T, we got 267 on the 67. Large Elifar here from the bishop still at it. Tristan, though, of course, despite the losses, is anything but done. Quick moves on the Western Victory Point. Good play there. We got Armored Science Goats here on the way for Evelyn. Could have had that out a bit sooner, but certainly better late than never. Oh, we got another car bombing here again on the positions here. Might also be time for Evelyn to slightly A spread out the position. The Lord's perhaps not constantly parked in the same place. Medic Bunker survive, and of course, so does the chimney. The victory point is being taken from us. Pack Bunker there at the ready, meeting Crusader head on. What's it called in to keep the British at bay? There's a look to outflank here for the south. We got the Storm Punches there with the shots and edit. That section is getting utterly ripped apart here by the 150 mm guns there of the Storm Panzer Fear. Let's get with the Pentafies at the ready again. Walkers can up the flank here. Daniel D clearly looking to cause as much havoc as possible. Kidding the artillery crews here though. Or oh, not. Oh, direct hit from the Shun Punch. Almost watched the entire squad with a single hit. And now the custom service and the officer should be able to finish off the last man. A brutal hit there against Daniel. And now we got Airbus here from Daniel trying to avenge his precious lost Gurkhas. Bunkers are collapsing though. Men are being eviscerated. We got the Pantavis going for the Hellcat. Sherman's still flanking. Matillo's on the flank here. Hellcat's though dodging a lot of shots here from the Pantavis. Really good luck there for Trister. And we might like to see here Pantavis knocked up the Sherman. Hellcat's sneaking up it again. And Matilda Crusader going for it. Rolling arm engagement here in the bombed out streets of Torrente. That was close. Another bunker up here. Another pack bunker from. Evelyn and another pack bunker being built here as well. A lot of pack bunkers for the Germans. Another six pounder gun here for Daniel D. Storm pumps there bouncing a fair amount of shots. More Hellcats and Shinting grow up here by Twister. Thumbs up. Also, fun fact about the Sturm Panzer IV is actually a, uh, shall I say, more developed version of the Sturm Infanz like a Schutz. Sturm EG 33B, which is actually used in Stalingrad. It was actually very much a sort of workshop made assault tank made in the workshops there, so they needed something to blast through all the urban environments of Stalingrad, but there's also like heavily armored. So they take a Panther Fleet chassis, mount a heavy infantry gun on it, and then just slap a lot of armor on it. There's like, you know, much more squarish than this one. But there's, you see, the initial sort of idea that would eventually become the Sturm Panzer IV, as they quickly realized the other thing was actually quite good. Now the Panzer IV, Blue Skirt Row, no armor to search for him. Guasatori pushing forward, but they are running a gauntlet here, and the Allies are more than happy to try and, you know, make that not work out. But there you go, Guasatori is just gunning and burning down everything here. And we got the Evelyn with another need for barrage. Mortar spotted around it. In section there running in front of the two storm pancers quickly runs away. In fact, almost getting wiped here. Daniel D's losses are getting quite uh, painful. Now we got the penalty time for the Crusader. We got the Matilda trying to cut the treaty. And our Crusader tank is down. That was very much its 
Last Crusade. And the pack bunker certainly isn't helping on matters either. 267 to 246. An absolutely brutal battle here. Panther Thea scores a white there on Twister again. He's really lost quite a few scores to these Panther Thieves. They're definitely paying themselves off nicely here for Blue Skirt. But over to Twister though. Who is actually got no infinite. He's got a few engineers and pathfinders, as well as just, you know, mostly tank destroyers and tanks. Now to Blue Skedro, who's got a few Grossator and Assault in his left, but otherwise it's mostly just Panzer Thieves. Got Nilo Varashi in the Germans pushing forward here against Allied positions, but the Sturmpanzer is getting hammered by the six Panzer guns. And down it goes, a grim blow to Turban. A nice win there for Daniel. Certainly needs it after all the losses he suffered to those Sturmpanzers. And there you go, trundling forwards here. Through the broken eastern half feet of the center of Torrent. And there you go, another cover bomb run here from Twister. Once more, the US Air Force gets to go all wild, while the British Air Force just kind of like an assault because they're usually the ones for the indiscriminate mass bombings. Well, that was not very effective. Looks nasty, but you know, not much actually getting blown up. And there you go, they got the medic bunker. We still got the knee levers in action, though. And we got Blue Skedwell with a fifth Panzer Fleece. So many Panzer Fleece. Hellcats going straight down the middle of being ambushed by the Panzer Fleece. One of the Hellcats, they're already suffering near catastrophic damage. But narrowly escapes it. In large part due just to the sheer speed it can generate. Blue Skedwell, of course, had a work fix on all his Panzer Fleece there. Has Evan planned anything here? The answer to that would appear to be no, still no star storm either. And in fact, I think he's gone for just more coastal service. We have only 250 points remaining. It seems a bit ambitious to do this lane to the game. And Blue Skate would, of course, with another Panzer 3, putting up to a total of 5 now, which is in fact a full Panzer 3 platoon. In fact, now this has to warm and on German pants platoons would become smaller before becoming more than normal. They mean like some of the you know tanks per platoon towards the end of the war. Fun fact. Another round squad there for Twister. A more to fire here, six pound gun cleared out there by heavy axis artillery. Up north, you can see there, Blue Skate was sitting about. He's trying to go for the victory point. He's smoke being the pros roll there. Cheeky, effective, thumbs up. Hiding in the smoke here, but can only hurt so long against the Germans. 231, 146. And we got a Stuttgart here for Evelyn. Interesting. Very interesting. Definitely not something you see a lot of this late into the game. Unless you're watching me. So that's an interesting choice there by Emberley. Not necessarily bad, but certainly unexpected. The enemy has taken a victory Thumbs up. Anyway, especially moving forward here. Dodging Nipa for rockets. Dude, they're getting hit. Need to be careful. Even if the armor science gets us, make it a fair bit tankier. Up north here, though, we can see Blue Skip Resource being routed here by the Shermans, trying to buy as much time, trying to disrupt, but ultimately can only buy so much time against all those Shermans. So we got both Twist and Blue Skip over there with a bit of an armored force. Still growing forward, see, may want to add the power machine gun. Going for the Crusader with the Stormcrusher, Slash from Key, almost got the Crusader tank here, but flank is deeply exposed here, and that's going to cost him the Stuart Key. Yup. That was a bit of a slip there by Evelyn, unfortunately. A waste of a good stook. Thumbs down. Meanwhile here, moving about here, looks like to be linking up with his teammate. Emil's got the Germans now looking to concentrate a push against Daniel D. Panda Fleece coming forward, see? Straight into the M2 Matilda, see? On oh, the Matilda 2s. M2s. And there you go, getting flanked by the Hellcats. 
And now we got Charlie Cole in there, really catching the Germans in a bit of a bind. I do the push forwards into the guns, or they can backwards into the bombing run. In this case, Busquet was pushing forwards here and then trying to sneak around there. Bunker down. Sturm puns it down here. A swinging push here by Twister that is certainly twisting apart the German front line. And certainly for Evelyn, that is pretty much all of his armor gone. And we got Busquet row with, uh, you guessed it, a sixth Panzer III. Although arguably at this point, going for armor service, I think, would be a fairly decent idea. But anyways, back to Daniel D, back to Evelyn. And Evelyn is now going for the Luftwaffe Company. 40 minutes in the game, Evelyn is going for the Luftwaffe Company. That is definitely very unexpected. I'm guessing it's due to the Mod of 3. That's really the only reason I can imagine seeing him going for that now. The territory sector has been claimed by the enemy. Due to the sheer number of like allied tanks, because Daniel D's also got f you know f four I'm tanks, two crusaders, and two Matildas. Actually, it might be. No, it is uh, two crusaders, two Matildas. Well, that's a lot of tanks, by the way. Except for Evelyn, of course, currently has no tanks. It's in fact now going for the Mod of Three here. Six pound gun being destroyed. So, yeah. Things are about to lightly evolve into some very large tank battle soon. Of course, Sans Evelyn. There you go, Mardafi. Almost done there. West side here, we got the soldiers being brought here by the Ralph Squads and the 30 cal there. That's an MD 42. Oh, well, there's an MD 42. Grenades off there. 215 percent 35. And there you go, the 6th Panzer three joins in. Yes, you heard that correctly. Sixth hands of three. Nemo. Twist here going for the mortar half tank is almost guarded here. Can twist to take out the mortar. We got smoke deployed. The Nemo, the Panda three column there is heading westwards there. Oh, gonna get ambushed by the Shermans. Of course, at the same time the Shermans are gonna be in the receiving end of like a lot of Panzer Fees here. There you go. First Sherman there. Down. We got Hellcat supporting. Could get flanked here with the Hellcats. There you go. Hellcats flanking here for the early way. Still going forwards here. One Panzer Fee down. Sherman down. There's two Shermans down. We got Jaegers for Evelyn. Guessing Panzer Tracks then. And there's obviously the other reason to go for that building, by the way. Would be Panzer Tracks. So. One Panzer Fee for two Shermans, I'd say, is a pretty good trade off for the Germans. Not amazing, but certainly not terrible either. But it's pretty solid, though. Pretty solid. Getting the opponent to throw away two tanks just to take out one of your tanks is definitely quite good. Crystal Service being put in the tilt of the Crusader, taking massive damage and pushed back. Whilst the Troy moving for that northwestern victory point again. Danger, close. We are engaged. Parfums over the BO Corp. The Guasatori, we got Tiller here in the east. Marder then just hanging back here for Evelyn. Got the Jaegers equipped with the Rakete and Panzerbüchse. Also known as the Panzer Shrek. Fun fact actually about the Panzer Shrek, then they're actually developing it. They weren't actually sure, like, whether they wanted, like, you know, as a handheld weapon or, you know, more like an anti tank gun. So they also developed alongside the Panther Trick, like Kettenmeer for 43, which you know from Code 2. That was actually, like, you know, basically just a Panther Trick, but in an anti tank gun design. It had more range and overall better accuracy, but overall it was just a lot less practical than just, you know, handheld Panther. And there you go, Mana getting slammed here. Similar lack like, enough numbers behind it. And enough line of sight as well. So there you go, just swarmed. We've got a massive ally ally push here. Blue Skit renowning in again with his massive throng of Panther Fees, but it's clearly getting a bit hesitant here as the Allied onslaught is now underway. See, almost got the Eagle Squad here. Bunker in the way until if I'm being called in, but probably not going to do too much here to the older British tanks. Neither being spotted. Almost got the Medic Bunker. Down it goes. German situation uh, definitely not looking great now. 
particular Eblen here is looking like a better weak spot. He's bringing in more Yetis with more Pantrafax. But against this many Matildas, they're honestly not that great of a choice. I know that because if I see an opponent usually going for lots of Yeggs with Pantrafax, I will always go for Matilda 2s as they counter them pretty well. So, not a great spot to be in here for Evelyn. Almost lost another Coastal Service squad here. Yeggs continuing forward to game, got Matilda there. Pantrafax hanging back around the repair bunker here. And we got here, of course, Twister's forces also at the ready. Back to Twister and to Blue Scarecrow. We got another bunker there for Evelyn. More need level fire here. I think trying to just disrupt his Daniel D repairing his armor, which obviously does make sense. We have 200 points remaining. Turn points left for the Germans. We got demolition packages here for Twister. A bit late to the party on that one. At the same time, suddenly spring out anti tank mines right now. Could do a number there on all the Panzer Threes, as they're not going to be expecting them. So they could suddenly just drive into a lot of anti tank mines and get disabled. Could be a problem there. There we go, going for the bunker here and holding here. Evelyn's attempt to build it up. Demolition charge almost researched. We'll need to down again, and there you go. Pantherfeast and we're catching the Sherman. Most shots are the missing or bouncing. Bad luck there for Blue Skip. Pushing forwards. Hellcats are flying away there. Telephone rank down. In the end, it ends up being a non engagement as both sides just fire a few shots randomly and then just pull back before things get too uncomfortable. Jaeger sending about here in the ruins. Got the bishop hard at work there. And Jaegers put oh Guasatori put somewhere, so those are definitely not Jaegers. Territory is now in enemy hands. Guasatori caught with the MB42. Hundred and seventy four versus eighty six. And there got another massive Panther Three push here. Blue Skate again trying to break through, but I think trying to like launch head on assaults with all these Pantathies is not exactly going to work out for him. And if anything, these these for the archers to you know halt them and if not straight up blow them apart here. Telefiring down, they're almost taking out one of the Pantathies here. Hellcats going in, their repair bunker down. And we got now new left in the service of the Allies there. We still apparently also have a gem one there from Evelyn. And there's knee levers on both sides, ball appearances. Was there? It at least looked like the Allies had one. Maybe it just misunderstood something. That is not impossible. I guess so. Another Matilda out there, though, for him. For Daniel D, that is. Not for Twister. It just really seemed like the out one. I mean, he could have had that one. So it seemed plausible. Just briefly. Anyways, another Hellcat there for Twister. That's going to be five Hellcats. Pantherfees diving in, then we've got 142 versus 86. We've got building facade, they're crumbling, but the Pantherfees are moving in there. Swiftly, rapidly, guns blazing. Sherman, I still well there. Twister, caught unprepared for this sudden rapid explosion of armored violence, but there you go. Immediately lights up one of the Pantherfees that's pursuing with the Hellcats. Of course, there are more Hellcats on the way. Pantherfees getting away. Hellcats pursuing, got another Pantherfee for Blue Skate Row. Hellcats, they're going at it. Ace Pantafi, there you go, turning around here now, going for the Hellcats, got a lot of fire here. Tanks and tank destroyers being lit up here across the southern square. In these side, Matilda's are sweeping up here through Evelyn's infantry. Hellcats coming down here. Pantafi down, other Hellcats dying forward. It's another Pantafi there on the way for Blue Scarecrow down to just three Pantafis. Let me leave. Twister's down just four Hellcats. Now the Hellcat down. East side though, we got a massive advance here. We got the Bishop flying directly into Evelyn's base here. How many cats on the retreating troops here? Very close here. Oh! Shots are just all landing just a bit off mark here. And the Panzer Company actually here saved a lot of Evelyn squads there. But the Matildas are now approaching the base here, blasting through the front door. Blue Skate, we're building up for another push. We've got 89 versus 86. 86 versus 86. 
Looking increasingly bad here with the Germans. Seventy four versus eighty six. East Panzer three, they're in trouble. You can see evidence actually switching westwards to assist Blue Skirt over here. Indicates also an extent he's kind of dispensed as a force, like just can't launch an assault on his own. And really just has to try and support Blue Skirt row. 56, 50 feet. 50. 47. 44. Yeah, you just move through the strangely silent street seat. That I think is about to change. There we go. 38. 5. Going for the Hellcat seat. 32. Machine gun bypassed. Mine's going off down the center. 23. 20. Point. We got there. Didn't realize we're moving this arm and arm towards the center west. 17. 14. 11. Not looking great for the Germans. Only OD's 9 ground point 8. Eight. And we got a car bomb around the victory point here. 5. 2. And that's it. GG. Game over. Loss here for the Germans. Victory for the Allies. A brutal battle here. A lot of bad and forth here. A lot of artillery as both sides try to take each other out. I do think Evelyn seemed to like a bit of clarity as to what they wanted to do. And also I think at times was a bit too passive. I think that allowed the other times to swing hard in a blue skirt row though of course i do also think blue skirt row could like maybe at times go on for some deeper flanks rather than just trying to charge in head on and armored or so still feel like would have been a nice addition as well still good play by the allies good teamwork then also i think good uh exploitation when the germans did make some mistakes so there you go hope you got this match you learned something from it if you did subscribe like share comment tell your friends tell your family and as always you can support the promo cast by donating your patreon patreon this is improving soon cheers and see you all tomorrow for the last episode bye everyone